Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. As always, it is Nick here, back to your daily crypto news and analysis. And today we are going to be talking about Zenfin, aka XDC. So with that being said, let's just dive in and let's start off with this article here from the ITFA. This is when Zenfin joined the ITFA. They were the first blockchain company to join. And within this, the, the key thing to focus on is the SME trade finance gap. All right. This is a three to five trillion dollar gap. And as we look at Zenfin, right, we even see down here that the TFDI provides the most comprehensive set of trade distribution capabilities. We welcome Zenfin's XDC network to the TFDI as this enables us to bridge the $19 trillion trade finance asset class with any type of funder through tokenization and digital assets. Now, as we look at this, right, like not only is this bridging the $19 trillion trade finance asset class, but it's ultimately as well closing the three to five trillion dollar SME gap. This is so crucial to understand because as we look at this, XDC currently is extremely undervalued. I even said it over on Twitter. I said, you know, too many people are overlooking XDC at such crucial times. September 20th is when the electronic trade documents bill finally comes into effect. This is going to change the trade finance sector forever and ultimately usher it in to the digital age. And as we look at that, right, like I do believe that Zinfin um, is going to be so crucial for this. And I also think that as we look at how much money is locked away behind trade finance and the gap that's there as well, I do believe that XDC could become an absolute giant in this space. Now, I've seen a lot of people say like XDC is an Ethereum killer, just like any other major, you know, layer one in the space or so. Um, as we look at XDC, I'm not too sure if it is going to be the actual Ethereum killer or not. Um, again, we've heard this being uh, touted for a very long time around this space. Um, but I do believe that XDC definitely has a ton of power and potential behind it. Um, I also love comparing, you know, some of these tokens to Ethereum because I think that we are all aware of how inefficient Ethereum is. I understand how Ethereum is also, you know, still a number two large um, asset in this space. But as we look at Ethereum, we know that this is outdated technology. We know that there's a lot of inefficiencies and there is a lot better networks in the space and efficient um, you know, ways of going about enterprise grade adoption, institutional grade adoption, things like that. And I do believe that XDC could very well be one of those big players. And I love comparing XDC or any other asset to Ethereum because the way that I look at it is Ethereum is outdated. It's old age tech. They're trying to innovate. They're trying to upgrade to Ethereum 2.0, Ethereum 3.0. Um, but the technology is already here, right? Like we don't need to wait for Ethereum to upgrade because we already have all these other great networks. If that is the case, and if we are seeing the market being cornered, is it too crazy to think that XDC could be valued at you know two hundred billion dollars in market cap eventually, or even XRP or you know Casper or HBAR or any of these other assets? And the reason why I bring this up is because I I think too many people think that like these assets can't reach these you know uh, market caps. Now listen, is it going to happen in the next cycle? Is it going to happen you know very short term? No, it's not right. Like obviously this is going to take some time. Um, but you know with that, you know for the next seven years in the space to 2030, and the reason why I say 2030 is because that's when we have a lot of these uh, projections around like tokenization things like that becoming much larger than they are today. I do think that a lot of these networks and including XDC, of course, um, could very well see you know tens and even possibly hundreds of billions of dollars flooding onto the network. And you know with that, I do think that there's going to be a significant demand um, of these tokens as well, which could ultimately lead to incredible growth value wise. Now, as we look at that, right, like, why do I believe that XDC is becoming a pioneer in the space? Well, it's very s simple, right? Like, go go all the way back to May. XDC network gets Japanese foothold via partnership with SBI subsidiary. So this was a big one. Um, and this is all through SBI VC trade. And we even see down here that we are delighted to expand our cryptocurrency offerings by adding XDC to our exchange. XDC network brings a unique value proposition to the trade finance market. And we believe its addition will enhance our customer trading experience. Now, of course, like during this time, um, we weren't really seeing, you know, major moves or anything like that. But after this, we did. Um, one thing that I would love for you guys to understand is that as we see 
this space growing and growing and growing, there's only a few assets that I actually feel very confident about long term. XDC is one of them. And this is also why I say, like, I do believe that XDC will, you know, reach Ethereum's market cap and, you know, even much higher than Ethereum's market cap. Um, you know, I talk about these assets in a sense that, like, these could very well be future $1 trillion assets. And the reason why I say that is because of how much, um, you know, demand there is around specific networks in the space. And the demand is coming from enterprises, institutions, things like that, um, that want to embrace the efficiencies that are locked away behind this technology. This is technology at the end of the day, but it's next generation technology that will ultimately reshape the world we know. And, you know, I, I think that's definitely exciting to see a lot of these big moves around XDC. Very similar to going back to April of this year as well. This year has been Zinfin's year. We do see the ICC, the World Trade Organization, Citigroup, and Trade Finance Global Recognized Zinfin XDC Networks Potential in Trade Finance. These are very large leaders, especially around trade finance, but also even around um, the just financial space, like Citigroup, for an example, right? Um, but then we just recently seen this article get posted. This is from uh, September 1st. It originally got published on August 30th. And this is from the Trade Finance Global uh, website. We do see the G20's vision for trade and investment, a deep dive. Now, within this, there's a few incredible notes. Um, the big one that I really kind of look at here is this one. The G20 and investment uh, ministerial meeting was held in India on August 24th through the 25th. The meeting focused on the future of trade and investment in the wake of COVID-19 pandemic and the war in the Ukraine. These are two major accelerants towards the digital age around specific markets. Now, within this, the G20 also mentioned um, the need of a rules-based, non-discriminatory and transparent multilateral trading system with the World Trade Organization at its core. This is crucial to note because guess what? The World Trade Organization, all right, is working with the G20. The G20 is, is given the FSB power to usher in global crypto regulations by 2025. And also, the World Trade, Trade Organization is an organization that has spotlighted and recognized Zinfin's power around trade finance. But also, guess what? We know that within the World Trade Organization's blockchain and DLT uh, report, here you guys have it, November 2020, blockchain and DLT and trade. In this, they did mention trade Phoenix. They've also mentioned how big this is for the MSME space. That's going to be crucial to note going forward. Um, and they also talked about how uh, this platform is crucial and how beneficial it is. But then also, we know that from Zinfin themselves, here you guys have them, honored to see the XDC network and Zinfin official mentioned alongside trade tech in the World Trade Organization's latest report, the promise of trade tech policy approaches to harness trade digitization or digitalization. This was in 2022. All right. Now, with that in mind, as we go back to this report, all right and we scroll down, we can see a few things that they are heavily focused on. So first off, they do talk a little bit about global value chains and how uh, they are crucial. But then here we have integrating MSMEs in global trade. Micro, small, and medium enterprises are central to inclusive growth and development, but in recent years, there has been increasing hurdles for MSMEs in increasing their participation in world trade. And in order for them to access information, financing and markets, digital technology and the development of new tools needs to continue at rapid pace. We believe that MSMEs are central to inclusive growth and development. However, they face disproportionate challenges while striving to increase their participation in world trade. We therefore commit to working together to facilitate the participation of MSMEs in global trade. How are they going to do this? Right? Well, it's all through digital technology and it's going to be accelerated as well. And the crucial thing to note is when we go back in time to some reports, here's September of 2020, right around the same exact time that we've seen this report by the World Trade Organization. This is November of 2020. 
Um, within this report, we do see alternative finance, new opportunities with tokenization and digital assets. Now, guess what? We even see here that the, the major thing is how Zinfin will reshape the trade finance space and benefit medium and small enterprises. They talk about it heavily in here. They even talk about how as new SME financing platforms emerge, tokenization and distributed finance uh, will enable organizations to tap into new and unconventional liquidity sources, top among them retail investors. The idea here around liquidity sources is also Trade Phoenix, uh, Trade Phoenix's uh, scope. When you actually read about Trade Phoenix, they are a liquidity provider essentially. This is crucial. Like we even see here, like in the future, Trade Phoenix plans to launch a liquidity aggregator service using on-chain tokens. They already launched this. This is remember, like this is 2020. They already launched that service. Um, but this is all through connecting them with decentralized liquidity pools through the propri proprietary uh, tokenization protocol for meeting MSME funding requirements. Trade Phoenix is the key here. But also um, within this, there's a few things to really kind of look at. Uh, first and foremost, here's the top of the webcast agenda, the introduction to tokenization and digital assets with regards to the Zenfin platform, tokenization for alternative or unconventional lenders. Uh, this is that liquidity aggregator service, right? This is what I was talking about. This is uh, using QuickBooks and Zenfin. Remember that Trade Phoenix is a partner with, uh, with uh, QuickBooks. That's all what they were talking about in here. Um, but then also, we see the access to decentralized liquidity pools. All of this is through Trade Phoenix. This is why I say like focus on um, the ecosystem around uh, Zinfin because they are crucial. But this is all heavily focused on how to benefit MSMEs. And now we see from this report with the G20 that they are heavily focused on the MSMEs through digital technology and the development of new tools um, and how it needs to continue at rapid pace in order to adopt this. This is huge. And then also over here, this is a recent report, by the way. I believe that this is, yeah, this is uh, January of 2022. So roughly almost two years ago now. Um, within this, there's a few uh, things to look at. So here's MSMEs. Remember that they may, may lack funding uh, from the big banks that back 90% of global trade. They do. Um, Zinfin and Trade Tech are actually here to help them um, in terms of credit. But then also down here, we even see down here that tokenization of trade assets of security NFTs can build off the digitization of trade finance operations, which will make it easier for MSMEs to get funding. Today, 90% of trade finance is provided by 13 banks, and there is a funding gap between large established companies and MSMEs. And that's that three to five trillion dollar um, gap that they're filling. Like Zinfin is here to close that gap. This is huge, all right? This is why I say like focus on Zinfin and what they are doing. And also, just recently, we seen this. September 1st, this is with the LEI integration. XDC Trade Network enhances compliance with LEI integration. Um, this was a big one. I'll save you guys the trouble. I won't go over everything within this uh, article. Uh, shout out to CryptoNair D. He actually posted this article. And we even see here X X XDC LEI adoption will also serve to make trade finance a great deal more accessible to SMEs. This is the focus, and it has been the focus since going all the way back to 2020 by helping to close the so called trade finance gap and would also spur sustainable economic growth. This partnership would lower compliance costs and even help prevent documentary fraud. So this is a big, big change, right? Like this is revolutionizing the global value chains. This is revolutionizing trade finance. And I strongly believe that Zinfin is, it, it is the choice around this. Like they are chosen to be a major player around this. Again, yes, collaboration is crucial. That's why we have the ITFA. That's why we have the DSI. Um, all of these big names around trade finance are going to collaborate. But I do believe that XDC itself is going to be a key player. And when we talk about liquidity, when we talk about tokenization, all of that on a network demanding the token, when Zinfin has you know a very lo uh, low supply compared to most top 10 and top 50 giants, I do believe that XDC is going to become a major player in the space and possibly could very well be in the top 10. Um, and with that, right, like we have to believe that, you know, if we are seeing the age of utility rise, that the top 10 are going to be dominated by utility tokens. When we see utility take over, there's no question that these tokens are going to be extremely valuable. The question is, 
How valuable will they be? We have no idea. But in my opinion, I do believe that XDC will be as valuable, or if not more valuable than Ethereum. And remember, this is Ethereum at current market cap. We already know that Bitcoin at $504 billion is still less than Ethereum's top from the last major cycle. And if Zinfin can get to $500 billion, we're talking about almost a $40 XDC. Now again, is this gonna happen overnight? Is this gonna happen in the next cycle? No, but that's why you need to make sure that you are taking profits on the way up. You need to make sure that you are de-risking your investment and saving a moon bag on the sidelines for when things really start to ramp up because nobody knows where this space is gonna go. But I will tell you this, with everything that we are seeing with the acceleration of digital assets and digital technology to be adopted in and integrated within the global system, Guys, I don't think that there could be ever a better time to be holding some of these utility tokens uh, for the inevitable future, which is, guess what? A digitized and tokenized future. And with that being said, guys, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, definitely leave a like, subscribe, to notifications on if you guys want free content. You guys are more than welcome to follow me on Twitter and join the free Discord in the description below. And with that being said, guys, it's been Nick. Peace out.